Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tag Technicians Hour. Let me just show you a couple of things here. Um, I'll go straight because the beginning of the week, beginning of the month, uh, second day of October, Monday, but the first trading day of the month. So let me just show you a couple of things. If you look at I'll get it right up here, blank. There it is. If you look at that nine period exponential moving average that I talk about so often over the 14 or under the 14, look what happened in the weekly chart. I'll go to the actual charts right here. On the daily chart, let me give it to you here, INDU. The daily chart has already. Oh, right here, there it is. So here's the Dow chart. There we go. I and you. Um, we're looking at the daily chart with the nine period exponential moving average quite some time ago, flipping to negative. And that said that there's a good chance that we've increased the sell signal to a sell mode that's upgraded. Of course, it's downgraded because it's going down. Um, and we use the 200 period moving average in the travel wave methodology as kind of a benchmark. A strong look back period of 200 bars, in this case, 200 daily bars. And it's just telling you that we were way, way, way above it when we hit the 35,679 uh, high of uh, August the 1st. That's where we went short. We remain short. Although on a very short term position, we actually have uh, a long, a long way as we hit, did last week. And we took our profits in that. And now we've got that again. We'll see if that's going to hold. That was quite a bit weaker than the others at this particular moment. That is the S&P and the Qs. So, but look at this weekly chart. You see that S right there. This is the weekly chart. There's the monthly chart. Now we can start looking at the monthly chart for October. But in the meantime, here's the weekly with very poor nine period under the 14, very poor MACD, very poor stochastic at 24%. On balance volume is pulling back. So all the technicals here, are, are they not that strong? I do see some residual strength. And the reason why I say it is that I'm looking at the S&P. And the S&P daily chart went right to the 200-period exponential moving average for five days now. It's been testing it, under it, on it, just above it. And at uh, 42.90, up 2.30. It's really struggling. And look at the distance between the black 14-period moving average and the pink 9-period moving average in this daily chart. Now look at the weekly. Finally, you've got the sense that that 9 has turned down. I'll, I'll go to the weekly chart just because you can see it a little bit better. So here is the Dow daily. Here's the weekly, if I can get it right there. Oh, that is the weekly. Um, here's the S&P weekly. And remember the day... 30, 35, 40 minutes into the trading session. This is the, it's not the week. It's just a fraction of time. But you have got S, meaning that that nine has finally dipped. But it's a weekly chart. You have to wait until Friday. Well, wait a minute. Look what happened on the ES, the continuous contract on Friday. It already turned down. Now, it's done that a couple of times where it turns down to red, or uh, sorry, pink, goes to green, rallies, and then pink again, and then rallies. My suspicion is that this might last a week or two if it dips pink again by Friday. I don't know if it's going to be a sudden turnaround. In fact, we might go pink and then have a pretty decent bounce and then have to retest again. Look at the QQQ. The QQQ weekly chart hasn't even gotten close to turning down. It's, yes, the green 9 period moving average is sloping downward and the black 14 period moving average is sloping downward. But they haven't crossed negative. And if you go to the futures, the futures are much closer. Haven't turned down to pink yet. Look at the IWM, Russell 2000, pink for about two weeks now. Very, very weak. All right. So I want you to show you that. I call it the instrument of last, uh, the technical tool of last resort. 
look at this dollar. Look how strong the price is. Look how strong the green nine period moving average is above the 14. All I can say is <clears throat> I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see what happens because if you look at the EUR USD, which is the this is the euro dollar currency pair down 0.007 at 1.0507. Look, that nine period moving average is pink for a while. You made that high right over there, but <laughs> returning down. Look at the USD JPY. This is the yen. Very strong. Very strong. This is a weekly chart. All right. So let me get back to our story and we'll run this quickly. Um, we've got the S&P, as I said, it did the one to a little over one to one to the downside. Yes, the Chapman Way falling X. And that's the pattern that says, whoa, watch this because you can get a one to one to the downside of this arch formation, dreaded H formation gets, takes out the left side lower 433, 4335. Uh, that was back in August. And it did that. So now you've got a lower 42, 42.38.63. A bounce goes right to the pink nine period moving average and it gets repelled. The weekly chart, this turn down here yes, says you can have a rally, but it can't be. I, I'm not sure it's going to be that strong or last that long at this particular point, but the week is very short. Now look at the QQQ, same thing. So the QQQ um, has held way better, 354.71 low of mid-August was taken out at 351.36 four sessions ago. Nice rally to the 14 period moving average, pulls back, still green today, up to 19, trying to form some kind of support. There's your pattern called the dreaded H, and since we're always getting new uh, subscribe, uh, new, new well, subscribers as well as new listeners to TFNN, let me just do this for a moment to show you the patterns that I like to look at. So it's a very simple thing. I look at straight line up, straight line down, an arch formation, cup formation, or a mix between the two. If it's sharply down and then makes an arch and fails at a peak A or the second peak, which would be peak B, takes out the left side low, well, watch out. We've done that a few times here. And now what we're looking at is this large B. Oh, it's a B minus because it took out the left side low of 354.71. So let me just change that to a minus. I like to have it all as clear as possible. <clears throat> Here's your bounce. And this bounce says in the weekly chart, you've made your dreaded H. Remember what's the pattern we're looking at? If the left side low test is tested, in the arch formation, certainly from a peak A or a B that fails, it goes to a B minus, which this one has done. What happens at that particular low? Just as in the green reverse Y, if you take out the left side high, you can go quite a bit higher. That's very positive. So what we're looking at here is, yes, your cup formation went to a gray A. I did not put a down arrow, even though for two bars it closed under the 14 period moving average because it hasn't closed two bars underneath this low. I'm really close to saying there's a sell signal in the weekly chart, but I haven't yet got that. By the end of the day, we might get it. I haven't got it yet. By the end of the week, I meant to say. I have to wait for Friday because it's a weekly chart. And look at the single leg A in the, in the up chart of the top formation. It's still very strong technically. Look at the nines over the 14, prices over the nine. Bank is good, not as good as it was at the high, all the time high, 408 back in November of 2021. But the stochastics at 89% and flat, and I like that. I'll be back. Dow's down 119. SB's down four. And we'll dive in. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So folks, if you look at the XLK, the XLK is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund. And here we go, uh, Daily made a little trough D. The Chapman Wave, it did this dreaded H, the pattern we were just talking about a moment ago. It took out the left side low and on the third, no, for three days, for two days, it closed under that left side. The third day went above. So we're going to be watching this because there's a chance. I'm going to draw it in. I, I'm only drawing it in because it's a pattern that people watch very closely. In this pattern that I call the dreaded H, that's the left side uh, low gets taken out after an arch that fails at a peak A. There's the weekly chart. And I'm going to make this just for the moment. I'll make it thick. Make it blue, just so that you can see it nicely. Here we go, blue. And now I'm going to double it. Here we go. Copy it, paste it. And that says that there could be a test of the 160 level. What was the low just the other day? The low was 160.61. So it's almost done the one-to-one -one in the dreaded H pattern. Uh, that is the left the straight line down and yet another straight line. Remember in the chapter, and this is a pattern that I call the the falling axe. I just give these nicknames. It's like there's the handle, there's the expanded blade, and it's tilting down. So in other words, it's an expanding cone, declining expanding cone. Then it finds support, and then it breaks to the upside, breaks that trend line, and it goes high, and it makes this cup formation or V-shaped formation, goes right back to test the previous high. Well, you can invert that. I just turned the slide upside down. It's exactly the same thing. So he has this expanding axe, except it's the upside down one. Or this is the guy standing on his head. Uh, it's just a really safe thing to do and then chop the tree down, upside down. And what happens is it forms an A or a B, and it turns around makes the, the dreaded H pattern. But within it, it really has this inverted falling axe formation or expanding, rising, expanding cone. All right? And that's what you got, you got both in the daily and the weekly. There it is. And that gives you the one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. So now what we've done is we've seen 177.04, the high of December of 2021. Uh, drops pretty sharply down to 112 and then goes back the 50 points over 50 points and goes to 181.46. We've seen so many stocks and ETFs and uh, instruments 
that have made exact double bottoms and exact double tops within pennies after a year or two. It's just amazing. It could be days, it could be weeks, it could be months, even years. And here it is from 2021, December, to we're almost in December 2023. But look at that. It makes a high, and that is in July, of 181.46. So the technicals in the weekly chart are still very strong. Technicals in the daily are starting to weaken, but it hasn't gone S. In other words, the nine, my, my indicator of last resort hasn't turned down, but it's very close. So this week is a very important week. The daily chart's in a sell mode. The weekly chart should be in a sell signal, but I've waited because I need to see it close uh, with the nine period moving average turning down and it hasn't done that yet. This is important. And the SMHs, and I should mention we're still short the SMHs from, if I can just find where I type that, I'll find it one of these days, SMH. Okay. Semiconductor market vectors, semiconductor index. Uh, why is that? Uh, let me just put that over here. I'll put it out the way. That's right. VanX semiconductor ETF. Trading up $1.18 at 146.13. I uh, had one to one from the all time high. All time high. It goes from 159.42 in November of 2021 to 83. Almost a, almost a 50%, about a 48% decline. Then what does it do? It rallies back and it makes an all time high at 161.17 on the 30. Look at this. On the 31st of July, two days later before the open, we shorted and we're still short. We, we did use the, S, um, the SOXS as a terrific uh, short-term trade, trading vehicle, made nice money, and we haven't done anything with it lately. And now it's bouncing quite nicely off the low that was made at 139.76. This is one to one to the downside. It did it exactly. But here's the problem. And now I can start to increase the, the length of this, the pink nine period, exp I call this the, there we go, the inside track was a propellant zone. Now it's become a repellent zone. But we're right on the border. And that nine period moving average hasn't yet crossed negative. Now, this is the thing. If these all of these indicators by Friday start to go negative, pink, it means, yes, we could have decent bounces. But you've already now got the daily in a sell mode. You've got the weekly at least in a sell signal. Of really, I mean, the SMH is to me is it's one of the very important indicators. Why? because, um, or indices, I should say, because it has chips. And chips is the oil of the 21st century. It's as important as oil has ever been. And oil is still very important. In fact, let's do this. We'll go from this area and we'll look at the gold contract, which is down a little bit. That's down 20, um, accelerating lower away from the 200-period exponential moving average. And what are we looking at? We're looking at a situation where there was a potential for a cup formation. Never happened. In fact, now what we're looking at is we've taken out the left side low. The next low is right here in gold of 1825.4. Of that was a continuous contract, the low of the week of the 25th of November. Uh, what did I say? 1825, right? 1825.4 in the low today so far is in the 80, 1843 area. So there's a bit of room to go. And I, I'm kind of concerned about gold because I need to put it together with the XLF, the financials. And why do I do that? Because whenever there's an issue that looks like there might be some kind of a financial crisis coming, that's, that assassinates any weakness in gold. Because when the gold is moving up, it's usually because um, people of or countries, not not just you and I or or uh, institutions, it's countries, big, big, big money comes into gold when they fear some kind of uh, whatever it is in the financial sector. I'm watching this closely because so far the XLF, that is the S and P Select Financial uh, Spider Fund is really holding just sideways. There's the lowercase h that can go to a lowercase m in the monthly chart. There's a peak A, peak B, peak C. Remember, we were anticipating D. It failed at a peak C before back in March. I think it was March. No, February. February, the week of the 16th, 10th. Week of the 10th at 37, 30, uh, 37 13, pulled back to just over 30, ran to a peak C, and it looks like it's sliding again. He has the nine-period moving average. Just this is, the week has only begun. So I'm saying 
I've got a full week to go, but it has flipped to S, and that means that the nine is getting real weak, going under the 14. So I'm watching all of this closely, and it says, as I said to subscribers, we, we've done nicely. Uh, we've raised quite a bit of cash. We've been very selective in trying to get into positions that are stocks or whatever it is, ETFs maybe, that I like because they have more of, of an intermediate term uh, potential to either hold where they are or to move higher. Maybe not as much downside risk as some others. All right, within that context, I wanted to go to silver. We haven't spoken about silver. Silver is even weak. Silver down 0.7%. Down 0.83, 2161. Look, it's almost got this one-to-one. -one. I'll, I'll do this during the break. I'll show you the one-to-one -one that I use with the, um, like a propeller shop. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 62. SMB's up $1.70. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, the silver is sharp here low. It's making this arch formation. It's under the 200 period experience moving average. Um, high grade copper, high grade copper right now. Oh, sharp move down today. Uh, also making the arch formation in the weekly chart. It's been uh, pink for, oh, just for months. And the nine period moving average of the weekly chart. This is not such a good sign. Uh, would the iShares, actually I showed my subscribers to my opening call. I always on a weekend, I do about an hour long video going through different, um, what what's happened in the market, what I'm anticipating, uh, different positions that we have. 
and the wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, it actually held up quite well, but it is underneath the nine, uh, under the 200 period exponential moving average, having made a peak D. Remember in the chat wave, we always say from a, a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, you should get at least four higher peaks. Peak A is the first, higher peak is peak B. By one penny is a peak C, another high by one penny after the peak C is made goes to D, and that's your objective. It can go higher. But D is your objective in a buy mode. And this has gone to a buy mode in the uh, weekly chart, pulls back at peak D under the 200 period moving average. Weekly chart is kind of sideways. But if you're looking at the daily chart, there's a chance that this is a peak right here. A peak A, there's not a chance, it is. An A, that's a B. It just missed the C there. That would have made this a D. And it said this is the C and it's turning around. So I have to draw in the arch formation to say, oh, got to be careful. Could get that dreaded H. So we are, as I say, tentative in, in my opening call. I showed the stocks that we like very much, what we're trying to get. We did not start a position today <clears throat> on, on one of them, <clears throat> which we've had a little bit of success, but also a little bit of failure. And I'm thinking that this is in the area that should have some Good support, but even then, I, I've i made the stops pretty tight. I'm not messing around. Cash is king, and we'll be very selective in what we want for the long side. But I'm starting to look at more and more because I think we're getting closer and closer to some stocks that are – I'm just going to do this as an example. Look, Bank of America, for about seven years or so, maybe it's more now – Every year we've got bought Bank of America, written it up, and then as it started to come down, we've taken profits and then got out of it completely. They waited and waited and waited and then got I don't see a safe place to get into Bank of America right here. And Bank of America also has that brokerage division. And, and that to me is, that's going to be important at some, some stage, maybe not right now. But look at this. It's arching over in the weekly chart. The monthly chart, same thing. I'm not seeing strength. If it comes, it's going to be, you know, how's it going to come? I don't know. Look at the TLT. The TLT is taking out that left side low. Um, the first one that was at 91.85. <clears throat> now it's down to the 87. In the weekly chart, you've made the H pattern. Failed on the left side. This is the third time that we've gone under 91.85 this week. Let's see what happens if it's three weeks under that. That's that's tough. I mean, that's the on-balance volume says we're getting really close to some kind of a buy signal, but I haven't got the trigger yet. That'll come from the daily. The daily chart was kind of positive. I looked at it over the weekend. I said, okay, that's that's it's kind of a good sign for now, but I don't see anything that's giving me the signal that said, ho, ho, now you want to start a position that has the potential to go on for weeks to the upside, I don't see that yet. I see signs <clears throat> of weakness that are not being negated by strength at all, other other than the, the wash, the, the waves just keep coming over and over and over the rock and just keep you know washing it over. And that's what happened in the uh, monthly chart. So I'm very worried in KRE. Oh, I forgot to update this over the weekend. KRE, uh, this is a uh, trough F in the, uh, could be an alternate count right here. F slash could be F slash C in the daily chart. Uh, the weekly chart, nine period went negative, but the price is holding not too badly. So this is the this is a regional S and regional banking ETF, not looking good at all, but I think it's holding way better than the XLF at this particular point. That's interesting. Let me just show you the weekly chart. Keep your eye on the middle chart. That's the weekly, and here is the <clears throat> here is the. XLF, this is the larger S&P, it has the, the, the money center banks, etc. So this is arching over. It hasn't failed yet because closing under the 200 period moving average of 3260 would be a negative. Right now it's at 3299. A couple of things I want to look at here uh, within the context of all the things. Look, this is very important. You've got the BTC, which is the Bitcoin futures continuous contract with a big spike up to the up almost 6%. 1585 at 28,685. Over the weekend, I looked at this and I thought, gee, just stuck under this 200 period moving average. Well, this is a potential inverse head and shoulders, <clears throat> but that weekly chart says 
No, that 200 period moving average should be resistance at about 28,800. It's at 20,685 right now. So we'll see how this deals. But I said for the first time ever since we were long the, the GBTC fund, Bitcoin fund, and had this spectacular gain, and that's a couple of years now, I, I just been waiting and waiting and waiting. And I think we're getting closer to where something could happen because of politics. Uh, that might make it easier to at least see something happen in the whole uh, Bitcoin area. And that would apply also to the MJ, which is the um, alternative harvest. But from what I can understand, uh, the way that many cities have allowed uh, the uh, cannabis and the medical cannabis, uh, I don't know, what are they called, clinics, um, to be so close to one another, it's making it very tough for many of them. So I don't know how that gets resolved. So we've got a bunch of things to say. We could have really good gains in some areas, but the most important area, and now I'm going to go to this because it's so important. Uh, just quickly, I'll do the TLT one more time. The TLT, here's the weekly chart. I'll expand it. Look. Whoa, cancel. Don't want to can I don't want to get rid of that. No, no, no. Look at these arch formations that keep fading with beautiful proportionality here. The the plumb line, number of bars on the left side to the number of bars on the right before it breaks down. Look at that. Same thing here. Uh, at the uh, October low of 91.85, we took it out. In the same time frame, look, the number of bars to that lowercase h that looks like a lowercase m took out the left side low um, of 91.85, <laughs> and here we are. But the on-balance volume is saying we're getting close to at least a shorter term, some kind of bounce in the yield, in, in the bonds so that yields can pull back. And let's look at the TNX. There we go, TNX. Ah, made that peak D. What are we always looking for? At least a peak D in a buy mode. It made that D, had a good uh, good pullback on Friday. Today it's having a good bounce. It looks almost like the dollar, doesn't it? Wow. Huh. Um, I've got this as a leg F. This could be an alternate. Oh, if it's an alternate count, we should still be going up to a D, going even higher in yields. So this makes me... There are too many things that are not quite working out at this particular time for us to say, hey, we've got this incredible, fantastic money. Yeah, I've got a question. I could have a good Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, when a, a price looks like it's stuck, I like to open out the chart as much as I can. <laughs> I want to see the character. What is the character? Does it go to peak Ds? Uh, does it fail at a peak uh, D? Um, or does it go on to an E and an F or whatever? Well, look at this. <clears throat> this is pin, Pinterest. And you see this little rectangle I drew in at those peak Ds, double top. Amazing how these double tops work. And then it plunge and it got gapped gap down. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to extend it to the high that was made here at this peak C. And I'm just going to drag it right across this little rectangle. And it says, well, look, looky, looky. It's kind of been in this range. The most important range has been between 2640. Let's call it, uh, let's call it 26 for now. 2640. And maybe 20, 29. So three-point range, basically. I mean, it's obviously been down to the 20s, and it's been up to the 31s. But I'm saying the most important thing is to look at this. And if you look at what happened now with the market, kind of weak. The last few sessions have pushed it above the 200-period moving average. That's a good sign. So this – now I can go to the smaller one to show you something else. So this – Peak D, peak A, B, C, D. I just notate each higher peak. It's as simple as that. If you take out the initial starting point, it negates everything. Then you've probably got an arch formation. That is exactly what is what happened here. Look, arch formation. Right there. To that low right there. Okay. Now it's trying to form a rally. But you see this, the 200-period the moving average, the stochastic is at 54%. That's weak. I love 80% 80 is great or higher. 9 p moving average is rallied nicely. The MACD did cross positive. It's not that strong, but it did cross positive. The 9 is very close to flipping positive. So I see some good signs here, but the range is really what worries me. It's kind of stuck. It's trapped. It's like there are sellers in the 28s, and there are buyers in the low 20, 26, 25 area. And once it's stuck in that range, I, I would do this. You're now towards... The lower part of the range, not by much, but a little bit, I'd call it the lower range. So because it's held well in this environment, uh, the person that asked me the question, I think, is always looking at what can I buy? I'm prepared to have stops in, but what can I buy? I'm not an intraday trader. What positions can I get that can hold in this environment or even move higher. I think if, I, if I'm summing it up, that's kind of the way that this is, is, is the way the question is phrased. That's what I'm thinking. Well, if you look at the monthly chart, it's just stuck in a range. It's like hugging the 14-period moving average. If you look at the weekly, it's got a in a buy signal, but it's not really doing very much. It's taken way too much time. You know my rule of 136? 
Uh, one bar rest in a move up or down <clears throat> before making a new high or low. It's fabulous. Three is very good. When you get to six, you almost have to restart a new buy signal to get that power. Not that you can't do it, but it's a different pattern altogether. And here we are on the daily. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the eighth bar and it still hasn't taken out the high of uh, the at 28.31 on the 20th of September. If you're looking at the weekly chart, it's the same sort of thing, just sideways, sideways action. So I'm gonna suggest this. Why don't you start a very small position? It's like a feeler position. Why? Because if the market uh, by, when, this, by Wednesday or Thursday this week, if the Dow hasn't tried to close over 33,630, that's, um, there's got nothing to do with the Dow, but I'm using the market trend as, as a, for instance. And if the uh, S&P hasn't tried to get to the 4320 area, but instead we're making lower lows, I, and this is still moving higher, this is telling you that some people are looking at this as a recipe, <clears throat> little pun there, a, a recipe for an alternate perspective. This is holding, doesn't mean to say it's going to break to the upside, but it's holding very well. And then when the market comes back, you don't want to see this flop because now money goes into some other area. You want to see that move with it. So 27, 28, small position. In your case, I'm going to just initially say two-point stop is a little bit too wide. 26.64 is the 200 is the 14 period exponential moving average. I'm going to say 26.40 stop right now. So it's about a it's a, you can even have a point stop. And just give it a couple of days. And all I can say is if 2742 is the height today, if it closes today above 2765, that's a really good sign because it says it wants to revisit the 28th that was made about eight, eight sessions ago. That will be a good sign. If it starts to slide, 2666 is the major, major near-term support in the uh, daily chart. But I do think the idea of choosing something like this not a bad idea at all. All right, we did that. Next is uh, Apple. Apple. Oh, no, no, next was GDX. I didn't do the GDX as I did the gold. See, GDX did this lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m and then takes out the left side low, bam, just like that. GDX is a 26.06. Um, so I drew this in as just a parallel trend line. And that says 24s is a possibility. I don't like to go there. That's two points lower. And I don't have any, why, why, why would I just guess two points low? What I am going to say is that the speed and the power of the move down says that unless, and the on-balance volume is right at a level that says within a day or two, there should be at least a bounce under this. Oh, it's the only indicator I use as oversold or overbought is the on-balance volume, the blue line right here. Stochastics at 7%. That's the exact opposite of the... Um, being positive at 93%. This is negative at 7%. And it's going to stay negative until it goes over uh, 12%. Meantime, back at the ranch, um, the weight of this, let me just choose, I like to look at ASA. It's uh, ASA, is a, um, ASA is a gold and precious metals company. Look at this, making lower lows. Even today, it's making a lower low. It didn't make the cup formation that I said was really important. It's making an arch formation. So it says that the next level of support is from the week of the 25th of November at 11.05, and here it is at 13.06, two points down. I don't know if it's going to do that. I'm just saying I have to start looking at support levels rather than resistance. This, to me, is kind of a benchmark just for me, the way I look at markets. <clears throat> and if you look at the SLV, which is a silver, also just plunging down. Look at this gap down. You hardly ever see gaps in a weekly chart. What are you doing overseas stocks? And basically, you can think of this as an overseas stock. That's a huge gap to fill in now. And the monthly chart is going to an M. This is the iShares Silver Trust. Okay, Amazon. No, Apple was first. A question about, oh, WB, W, uh, Walmart, WBA, uh, Walgreens. I'll look at that in a moment. <clears throat> so Apple is coming off this 200 period exponential moving average. It's a good sign that, it's finally showing some support because it did the dreaded H pattern in the weekly chart. I said I have no choice but to say that Apple has gone to a sell mode in the weekly chart, one of the few that's actually gone to a sell, one of the big seven that's gone to the sell mode 
in the weekly chart. So this is important because it's part of the Dow, part of the S&P, part of the QQQ, part of XLK. It's really important. So we'll see what happens here because if Apple closes under 165 at any point in the next week, that's going to be pretty bad news. Next question came in for Amazon. Oh, no, X was Wall, uh, Wall, Wall Green, WBA. <clears throat> so a new, there's a new guy coming in to run it. And the question was, could it be like Culp for GE? GE, let me show you, GE is fabulous, fabulous move. Starting to roll over. Yeah, oh my. Dave, I'll be back in a moment with GE and, Wal and Walgreens. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So we're in the rectangle again, the one minute E mini, making lower lows and lower highs. And now look at this peak A, P, P, peak C, and it's just Barely at the 200 period moving average, it was barely up. It's just fractional new highs. I, I'm a little concerned here because um, from the news yesterday, you would have expected that if there's some kind of a, a holding pattern here, even if it's for 45 days, it would have given the market some kind of a relief bounce. And you got that intra, intranight, and then it was all over. Look at this GE makes it quick. D, C, D, E, F. When you do that with one bar rest in between, 
when you get to EOF, you've got to be careful because there's always a pullback. This is way more than a pullback. This is a severe pullback. But not if you're looking at the weekly chart. It's just a slow rollover. With you remember, I call this. This is like a little worm climbing up the branch of a tree, and then all of a sudden it flattens out, and then it starts the descent. And how much is the descent? I wouldn't be surprised if GE at 109.31 after a spectacular move um, tests the 102.64 area. So um, Culp did a fantastic job at G. Remember this G is at 109, but it's really at $10.09 because it had this reverse split. Walgreen Boots Alliance Inc. I, it's a little different because it's going to be a lot more work. That whole area has just been really, look at CVX. CVX is the same thing. CVX, a little bit better chart actually than what? CVX. CVS, not a better chart. CVS looks a little bit better, but not much. Uh, CV Health has a bit, and I said maybe a CVS takes over um, uh, Walgreens, but evidently uh, there's a different thing going on. There. I'll look at it again. I don't think there's any rush. I don't think there's any rush to get into anything. Question came in, where do I think a goal could go on the day? This is, this is at a certain point, people are going to throw in the towel with, with gold. But pretty disappointing. But I like to say is that the 830, 848, 838 level today must hold. Otherwise, I don't know what happens tomorrow. In the meantime, back to the right, check out Robert Pickball, my daily newsletter, and I will see you all. Don't forget today, we've got our new guest, Peter Bruno, coming in at 2 o'clock. Have a great day. I will see you all. Check out Robert Pickball, daily newsletter. Stay tuned for